Hello, YouTube land, and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 36. I am your host, Dantes, and of course, joining me like always, the man, the legend, and of course, celebrating a nice happy birthday to the Nintendo Switch, Kaliones. How you doing, Kaliones, in this beautiful, beautiful night? Well, uh, how you doing, Dantes? Uh, how you doing, everybody? And... Yeah, uh, we're going to be talking about um, a couple of different things. One of them is going to be about a glitch that caused an uproar and a lot of people to you know start worrying. <laughs> uh, also, uh, another one about you know, a possible new content being teased for uh, Super Mario Odyssey, about you know Nintendo's Metacritic ranking when it comes to their collective games, um, you know, for the first year. But first and foremost, we're going to be celebrating the first year of the Nintendo Switch. Happy birthday to you. Who you you? Happy birthday to you. Anyway, yes, the Nintendo Switch has turned one, Caliones. Uh, and we're going to go in depth with that. But before we go and do that, I do want to get a quick chip plug. I've been playing I Am Setsuna, Caliones. I am liking the game a lot that I'm planning to buy it on the Switch because even though I bought it for the PS4 to get my beautiful plat, uh, that game deserves to be on a physical in my shell right here. Looking good in all those games. And just in case, you never know what happens with those digital games once you lose, lose those licenses, Caliones. So I want to own the game for me. So I'm planning to buy it on the Nintendo Switch. But anyway, aside from the cheap plug that you guys need to go and play, I am Setsuna. Let's start with that sweet-ass rigmarole. I want to welcome everybody to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast. Episode 36, right here at the Force in Unison Gaming Channel. Please remember to subscribe, 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 like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also remember, if you don't want to see ugly faces, right, Caliones? We got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Dante says finally, go to Chigero's News and SwitchCore.net and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, are you guys ready? I said, are you ready? For the no one in attendance. And the, let me see, let me see, let me see around here. Whoop. Six people watching around the world. Let's get ready for Reggie's Hot Topics of the Week. My body, ready, my body is ready. My body is ready. Caliones, of course, what is the first hot topic that we're going to discuss tonight? Well, uh, I mean, you can basically see it from the thumbnail. Uh, we're, we're celebrating Nintendo's first year. Today is March 3rd, 2018. On March 3rd, 2017 is when the Nintendo Switch first released... Uh, yes, we have a couple other things to talk about, you know, certain glitches and things like that because of the system turning one year and, and a lot of people panicking. Why because they turned, <laughs> yep, All over again. But yeah, be safe, be calm. Uh, they have responded on that front. But uh, before we get there, Dantes, um, this has been, I would say, you know, for me, one of the best first years for any system in any decade um in ever when it comes to video game systems um doesn't matter what console you support doesn't matter what brand you're a fan of but to me what has happened with the switch and that's without counting the turnaround that it had you know, uh, coming from the wii u and moving over to the switch it's been an amazing year so many great games so many great experiences and different kind of way you know that you can play even games that you had already played before. So, um, Dantes, try to try to describe what this year has meant for you. Well, first, uh, and, very first, before yeah. we do that, open the article, go through the big hits that the Switch has this year, and then we'll go into depth on what, how we feel, how the Nintendo Switch performed in this first year. So, go ahead, Caliones, give me the lowdown. So, well, um, but basically, okay, so we're talking about, uh, and this is something we're going to discuss, um, you know, of course, you know, with the many games that the Nintendo Switch has had. Um, if you go back to its original launch, the the, the launch itself, uh, when compared to the Wii U, the Wii U had something like close to like 30 games or so uh, that it, that the system launched with, but it, it didn't really have 
one of those must have games, one of those games that sells you the system. Um, and you know, to me, and this is something that I said before the game had uh, come out, uh, I had written an article for uh, Shigeru News talking about how uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was to me the best and the most important launch title since the original Halo on the uh, on the Xbox. That's how important this game was. And and this game basically set the you know set the stage with how the system was gonna sell uh going forward. So yes, uh the game was being worked on for the Wii U uh at first. Yes, Nintendo delayed the game and they forced it to, you know, to you know to you know for it to coincide and release on the same day for the Wii U and Switch, but even though it was made for the Wii U first, it, it still feels like a game that belonged on the Switch. And, and, and it's the Switch's signature game. Of course, uh, throughout the year, it's gone on to win yeah, a lot of you know, Game of the Year awards. Most recently, the, uh, the DICE Awards uh, a couple of weeks back. But it tells you that it is very important whenever you launch a system to have a signature game uh, for it, especially when you're coming from a failed system like you know, like the Wii U, which you know, sadly uh, it is a failed system, and Nintendo needed something to justify to the people that they could believe in this new console that they should adopt it. And for those other people that weren't like kind of like skeptical at first, they were giving you a reason, um, and that reason was you know Breath of the Wild, of course. It did have you know, the Super Bomber Martin R. It did have you know one two switch, which I at first I was saying that it should have been a, a demo that came with the system, but it sold amazingly well, uh, even though it had a fifty dollar price tag. Uh, so yeah, the initial library, like I said, not that many games compared to the Wii U, but but the quality and the uh, then the killer title was there. Uh, so you know, your thoughts on this? Thank you. I had it on mute. So anyway, <laughs> with the launch punch portion of it, of course, I will say that when they uh, sh uh, show the Switch for the first time, the first trailer was beautiful. It showed what the system could do. And the first thing that I said when I saw that trailer was like, finally, Nintendo has learned to promote the damn system. Because if there's something, Kaliones, that hurt the Wii U, of course, was the shitty ass, <laughs> let's just say, uh, promotions that they gave for that system. Even the the uh, awful, the commercials awful. were horrific. So I am really glad that the first thing out of the gate was like, boom, here's the Switch. We had adults playing the system. So it showed that the system were not only for kids. It was also for adults uh, in your busy life like me and Caliones. Then they, of course, did the official uh, release uh, conference and at first I thought oh my god here we go again with the Wii U the games were not there uh, I, at that point the only game that I was interesting to me was Zelda Breath of the Wild but I had a Wii U in theory I could have played on the Wii U and I don't need to buy a Nintendo Switch at that point but I said look I'm always in with Nintendo I always buy their system first day as the GameCube is the only system I haven't bought first day but anyway uh, but I'm always there first day. So I went and said, okay, let me see. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get Breath of the Wild. Now, admittedly, even though the the launch games were dry, Zelda Breath of the Wild give you enough reason to own the Switch. And yeah, you could have the Wii U, but being portable, being times where you could just take the game. Oh, someone wants to watch TV in the house. Okay, that's fine. Poop, undock the Nintendo Switch, started playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm like... Oh, I'm getting the same experience that I typically get on a on the TV, but on a handheld, and it was pretty pretty sweet. And and of course, at that time, I didn't know Zelda Breath of the Wild was so great of a game. Once you start playing, of course, Kalyanis. Hopefully, the glitch has not erased my data, but I put over 375 hours of uh, of time on on Zelda Breath of the Wild. That's how much I love that game. So it was a great launch lineup. The other games were crap. Nintendo did pull a Nintendo, which is selling you a demo for $50. And uh, sometimes, again, every company has their, their, their lapse in judgment, let me put it that way. And that was a bad lash, lash, uh, lapse of judgment, but this, the game sold. But still, Breath of the Wild was a standout. But uh, So I think that that helped the Nintendo Switch go out through the gates. But move to the next portion of the year, Caliones. What's next? And for the uh, okay, so so we're basically address. Uh, first, you had the the reveal uh, that was in October. I believe it was uh, October twentieth. Uh, then we had 
uh, the Nintendo presentation, which, which was in January. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you had the launch uh, of the system. So the uh, the launch of the system, um, I mean, that was um, you know, a lot of people running to the store, a lot of people going over to, uh, you know, to make sure that they secured it before it, I mean, it ran out. Uh, but, and I myself, I actually went with my brother I, I, and we picked up three systems, um, one for me, one for him, and one for another one of our coworkers as well. So we, so we made sure to, uh, to get those. So then uh, after the launch and after uh, Breath of the Wild, then we had uh, April. So in April, um, we had Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, which uh, coincidentally in this past DICE uh, Awards won the best racing game uh, on the system. So yes, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it is, um, I mean, you can call it a port. Uh, it is, you know, Mario Kart 8 had released originally on the Wii U. Uh, they did add additional battle stages. They did add the second item that you can use um, here graphic wise, um, improve the, uh, the performance as well. Uh, but still, um, the game uh, so far, I believe, is the uh, the second best-selling game on the system, right behind uh, Super Mario Odyssey. So that's how great uh, the game has been received. Okay, so quickly to go to Mario uh, Kart, the loss. I'm not going to go to win. That is Mario Kart. I think it was good strategy for Nintendo to bring this game, make sure that Nintendo had a plan. They made sure that they had at least, most, I would say monthly, triple a or a first party game from nintendo and mario and mario kart was make sure that they couldn't develop a mario kart far, fast enough admittedly no one played mario kart probably in the wii u but it did so really well in the wii u to clarify even with the low uh sales it did so really well but this time they added a battle mode they added all the dlc enticed players like myself who did not buy the dlc or anything to that extent to buy it again and have fun play online play with new people and, and peeps so it, it, it was a good strategic decision to have Mario Kart Deluxe. And it is a good game. Even even went over in, in reviews over the original where it got into the 90s on Metacritic. So anyway, Carlos, go to the next piece of the year in review for the Switch. Okay, so moving on from Mario Kart, then uh, you have a Nintendo. You have the Nintendo Direct uh, at E3. And uh, you also have the tournaments that they had during E3 where people were able to experience ARMS, which is the game that released in June uh, for the Nintendo Switch, but also uh, Splatoon 2, where you know, they had the, uh, the theater uh, basically separated so people can engage in those. So uh, another thing that actually did help is those tournaments um, and the, uh, the commentators, you know, the people doing the commentating, they were excellent. They uh, kept you engaged, and it actually gave you a reason to you know, to like those and, and to you know to kind of push the uh, the e sports initiative when it comes to Nintendo. Uh, yes, it's not as developed um, as we would like because of you know communicating with the system where it's still lacking on there. But uh, it gave you um, what Nintendo needed. Arms, uh, of course, uh, had a great showing and it had a great release. Where uh, after Splatoon 2 uh, came out, it kind of hurt it, but Arms was the big release in June for Nintendo. Like a lot of people in the chat are talking right now. They're saying that ARM was alive for like three months. Yeah, admittedly, uh, ARM was not maybe the huge hit that Nintendo wanted. They maybe wanted the Splatoon for fighters. But it sold well. I think it sold well enough for Nintendo to give it another shot and maybe even make it a more in-depth fighting game the next time around. I did play ARMS a little bit, and it had some nice controls, nice motion controls too if you wanted to do it that way. So I don't, I don't feel ARMS was bad. I think it, it, it just covered a gap in the summer when Nintendo br brought Splatoon 2, which was a lot of people were waiting for. Uh, so that's where ARMS was kind of like the stop gap. Because as soon as Splatoon 2 came out, you guys know ARMS was basically dead. But it sold well. It made money for both Nintendo Platinum games. So I think it should be counted as a success. So go ahead, Calionis, with the next portion. Okay, and like we said, um, you know, afterwards in July, and that's when you had the release of Splatoon 2, uh, releasing at the, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the end of July. Uh, the, the game had already been showcased uh, during E3 before that, and you know, people were saying, uh, and they you know, ran the rumors that the game itself uh, was supposed to be a port. So instead of having Splatoon 2, it was supposed to be a port of the, uh, the Wii U. Then, of course, they named it Splatoon 2, and then people started complaining that uh, it was just the same game, basically, just with a different coding. But... Um, 
that's why the tournament was very important. And of course, yeah, the, the mechanics of the game is similar because that's usually what sequels do. Yeah, they, they are similar games. Uh, the, the story mode was different. Uh, the game ran, you know, looked a whole lot better, especially when compared to the original one. But Splatoon 2, and especially in Japan, took the country by storm. It's already sold over 2 million copies in Japan, and it, there's no stopping it uh, by how the sales look for the, you know, the last uh, couple of weeks. It's still selling like crazy, and it's selling outside of uh, Japan as well. So this is one of the most important franchises for Nintendo, and it's one that they need to continue to uh, you know, put you know, some love and, and add things to it because... Uh, it's up there when it comes to like the Smash Brothers and, and those types. Yep, so I'm not a fan of Splatoon. You know me, guys. That's why you have Caliones and Inkling G taking care of the fort with Splatoon. I do not care about Splatoon at all. But I cannot deny the success that this game has brought for Nintendo becoming, I believe, you know, top three franchises for Nintendo. And what I mean with that is sales. Not, I'm not going to put Splatoon ever over Xenoblade Chronicles. But I'm just saying, overall in sales and the impact that I had, Japan loves Splatoon. Like Kalianas mentioned, it sold 2 million. Again, once Splatoon came up, that's the game that really shows the online functionalities of the system. And I believe that this is the type of games that Nintendo are going to show to try to sell you the online. So hopefully, they'll improve on the online when they uh, release where you're going to get an easier voice chat and, and things like the Xbox Live provide that could help the experience with Splatoon 2 because Splatoon 2 could be even bigger, Caliones, if it had a better online infrastructure. And what I'm talking, it's not so much about uh, online where you get disconnected. I'm talking more about the tools that you need to plan, to strategize, to make it easier for people to play yeah. uh, online. To games. communicate. To communicate, basically. Yes, correct. So that's the only thing that hurts this game. But can't deny the success. It was a big game. It, like you said, a lot of people said, oh, this is just uh, a port. It is just, hey, look, uh, what is uh, Madden? Every year, Madden is basically close to the same. They use the same engine. They just add a little, a little bit of rosters. I don't blame Nintendo. They added new stages. They added new guns. And they put a two on it. I think that was a smart idea. I don't think this one, it was better to call it two than to call it Deluxe, Kali, on it. I think for sure that it made sense. And I think it became the big runaway success that we have today so go ahead guys. Yeah, and and this uh so big that we actually you know featured the game every wednesday here um on our four seasons gaming channel so you know we have the people that are you know the subscribers and uh guests uh and we you know they we've had such great feedback so great uh, and so great uh, reception because a lot of people show up to play the game that's how how big it is and how engaging it is uh and it is you know to me perhaps the best um online multiplayer game on the system itself uh but then uh, moving on from e3 then we move to um i believe one of the most important months and important game releases on the nintendo switch itself uh and this is because you have an ip uh like mario where it is something that is sacred to nintendo nintendo it's hard to let other companies use mario uh, on their games, or uh, you know, give them free reign, which in this case is what happened. Uh, Ubisoft came in; they had an idea of what kind of game they wanted to do. They presented it over to Nintendo, and Nintendo, to their surprise, agreed uh, to what they wanted. It's uh, they have Mario in the game. They actually have Mario with a cannon and shooting, where you know people didn't think that was going to be possible unless it was a fireball, but. Nintendo allowed Ubisoft to make their own game uh, when it was first shown and everybody saw that, saw that it was going to be Mario together with rabbits. Then people started not taking the game, uh, I guess, uh, so serious. That they thought me. it was going to be a, a failure. Uh, yes, uh, you did uh, you know, comment on, on it as well. But I, I believe that they could do because Nintendo had allowed to use Mario and the Mario IP on there that they were going to do something special and that something special became Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So I, I was one of them that I really crap on the game. I was like, really Mario and the rabbits? You know, I would have preferred this type of game with just, and I still do. I don't like the rabbits. I'm telling you right now, I would still prefer just the Mario characters in Mario Kingdom uh, for, for, for this type of game. But, but, after 50 hours, I put 50 hours and completed 
99 point something percent in the game, right, Kaliones? Where's your completion? I'm just giving you shit right now. But uh, uh, I did complete most of the game. I have to say, give it credit where credit is due. The game is good. The game was fun. And, you know, this is one of the best examples, Kalianas, of a game that is great in portable. Like, I mostly played the game on portable because it was great to play it in short sections. That's why it took me longer. This is one of the rare times. Kalianas knows me. I play one game at a time. I cannot do two games at a time. But this was one of the rare exceptions that I was playing other games. But then every time I had a short burst, a short opening, I would just pop up the switch, turn it on, play this game, had a little bit of fun, continue with the story, moved along. And uh, I, I kept being entertained, Kalionis. And, and to the game's credit, it was hell of a fun. And it was also challenging. This is clear. It was challenging Nintendo. And I want to applaud Ubisoft in this case. Because Nintendo has struggled in the last couple of years making challenging games. Zelda Breath of the Wild, even though uh, it, uh, it was hard at first, you could turn the corner at one point in the game and make the game really easy. Mario Odyssey was too easy, in my opinion. So this game provided the challenge that I needed during the year because this game was hard and i'm telling you right now it is hard so if you if you are able to beat it and you're able to get up do all most of it then hey props for you but anyway Kalinas, this was a surprise and i'm gonna give credit to Kalinas. Kalinas says that the game was gonna be good sometimes i have to be uh, careful when Kalinas says oh it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great because he thinks everything that nintendo puts out is great but on this one i'm gonna have to give him credit it was a great game one of the best games that came out of 2017 Kalinas. Okay, and I'll, I'll still I'm still gonna say something that um, not necessarily the, directly from Nintendo, but uh, they, it it, it kind of Nintendo kind of had a low uh, in August as well because that's when uh, Monster Hunter Double Cross released in Japan, and it still hasn't seen <laughs> the game being released outside of it. So that was that happened in August, and uh, we're still waiting for that release elsewhere. But uh, not to you know, talk about the other uh, downside of things. Moving along. Then after Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, then we had the big release for Nintendo. And this is something that originally people thought that it had begun as a Wii U game. Uh, Nintendo did clarify afterwards that uh, the game was meant for the Nintendo Switch all along. Uh, and it, it shows because the game is is big. The game features a lot of enemies. Uh, it is, um, I mean, the platforming, it's uh, crazy on it uh, with so many you know, large buildings and different you know, stages, underwater, everything, even going into 2D from 3D and also, um, and it still runs great. Um, and are able to maintain that 60 frames per second on there. And of course, uh, the game has sold so far, officially over 9 million copies worldwide. And that game is uh, Super Mario Odyssey. So Mario Odyssey, great game. It's a great game. I'm not, done, I'm not gonna deny that. I know Kaliones and I disagree. I still believe that the Galaxy games are better than Mario Odyssey. So that's me. But still was a great Mario game. I had a lot of fun. I did 100% the game twice. Play over 100 hours in this game, Kaliones. That means that I enjoyed it because you don't play 100 hours in a game if you don't enjoy the game. So it still was a great Mario game. Great platformer. Uh, it, the game does open up better. When you beat the game and then you do the post-game content, because admittedly, if you just played the story, the game was too easy. And that's, I think, where Nintendo needs to improve a little bit better. You know, we all grew up with hard games, and, and they need to treat people that they can beat them, right? And I understand that they just put an easy, hard, or whatever, Nintendo, but, you know, give something for the gamer that wants a little bit more of a challenge. And I think that hurts this game, that it's a little bit too easy. That's also maybe why I put it below Mario Galaxy, Kaliones. But still, great game. We gave it a great review. Uh, great, great, looked great. Uh, I think music was not that great, Kalionis, but the game looked great. Like you said, it ran 60 frames per second. Uh, showed what the Switch could do. So again, Nintendo had three games this year over 90 Metacritic, and it shows with the quality of Mario Odyssey, uh, Breath of the Wild, and Mario Kart Deluxe. But anyway, go ahead, Kalionis. Okay, and uh, after October, and you know, and the uh, the game that basically pushed uh, the holiday season and helped Nintendo Switch be the top selling console, um, and you know during the holidays and after as well, because it was also the best selling one uh, last month. Uh, but uh, after this one is when the game that 
is the most cherished game by Dantes uh, on this channel. Something that he's been talking about uh, for you know since the game was announced. Uh, a game that nobody believed, including us, that Nintendo was going to be able to release it in 2017, and that's because the previous title had released, uh, you know, uh, you know, short a uh, couple of years, like two years ago. So they, um, Monolith Soft, had been working on this game for what seemed like a little over two years, and somehow they were still able to deliver. Uh, yes, when it comes to certain things, it feels like it was rushed. Uh, there's things that can, could have been improved, but to me, um. It's been the best experience that I've had on the Nintendo Switch this year playing this game, and this is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I, to, uh, yeah, if I have to say a lot. I mean, you guys know I preach on this game. We even have a show every Monday, Xenoblade Mondays, where uh, we, we do show some gameplay of uh, fighting some super bosses uh, over the game. Xenoblade Chronicles, I love this game, Calionis. This game was... A little bit rough at the start for me. It it did look rush. Uh, it, I saw that. Oh my god! Did they really did this game? Monolith Soft rushed this game, trying to make it in time, and it was not polished as the original Xenoblade Chronicles. But there's a point in the game that I'm telling you, if you are patient with it, the battle system clicks. The you can uh, survive the crappy field skills, which I still hate. But you can, you can survive them once you start getting more blades and blades and blades. And then you start doing more Merc missions. Uh, and then the game just opens up and, and the story hooks you. You know, typically I, I'd like to finish the game where I'm done most of it before I finish it. But this game, once I hit Chapter 8, I couldn't stop playing at Calionis. I went all out, all in. Once you get to that World 3, it's it's all over. You're not, you're not doing anything side content anymore at that point. You're just going to beat the game. There was moments in this game where, you know, you know... Uh, how would put it my my hair and my body just like tingle like it was so awesome it was so uh, goosebumps goosebumps yeah exactly that's the word i was looking for thank thank you there's things in the story there's plot holes and some characters death that are not merited because they did not develop those characters well enough to, for you to care but the characters that they develop was well developed and you care about those characters right so to me and i'm glad you enjoy it Kyle. Honest, to me this was my game of the year uh, I admittedly, technically, Zelda Breath of the Wild is the game of the year. It is the better polished game. It is the game that had the bigger impact in the industry. I am not going to deny that. But if you tell me the pure joy of gaming, which was, was the game of the year for me, it was Xenoblade Chronicles without a single doubt. Game game, uh, game surpassed my ex expectations and, and, and became officially with this game because it's Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I enjoyed a lot, even though it didn't have a great story. It had a great world exploration and world building. And then Xenoblade Chronicles 2 officially became my favorite RPG franchise. And that's saying a lot when you have played uh, uh, franchises like Lunar Silver Star Story, like Final Fantasy, like Breath of the Wild, I mean, excuse me, Breath of Fire. Uh, you know, there have been a lot of RPGs that you could say that are great, great RPGs that deserve to be talked and discussed for generations to come. And this game, to me now, and this franchise became, and Nintendo owns the best platformer and the best RPG in the industry. And that's uh, saying a lot. And a lot of people may disagree, and I understand. If you like Western RPG, you like Witcher and stuff like that, hey, good for you. Witcher is a great hell of a game. But for JRPGs, in my opinion, and I haven't played Persona, I will see. But for, for, for JRPGs, in my opinion, this is the best game this generation of RPGs. Anything to add, Kalionis? Uh No, I mean, like, like you stated, like uh, this is how Nintendo uh, was able to close out the year. Uh, not not its first year uh, on the market, but, you know, 2017. Um, so, and it was something that, um, especially the sales, um, we thought that the game eventually was going to be able to get to a, a million copies sold. That it was going to take a couple of months uh, to get there. But... Uh, we were actually surprised that that I think it was in a month and a half or so it was able to get to a million uh, copies, and this is thanks to uh, all the Nintendo fans out there, to the Xenoblade fans, to everybody that supports the system, and and even other people because there's something special about the Switch that Nintendo hadn't been able to do uh, in a while with their system, and that's to sell games. Normally, uh, people would buy 
the Nintendo IPs, they will buy the Mario, they will buy the Zelda, the Metroids, and they would not really look at any other games outside of that. So something is happening with the Switch where people are buying a bunch of third-party games, they're buying the indie games, they, they're buying non-Nintendo games uh, alongside their uh, Nintendo IPs as well. That, and I don't know what it is exactly. It could be the portability, the, the hybrid aspect, or something else, but fans are getting the games. I agree. Uh, we're already hitting the 30-minute mark. This is how much we're celebrating the first year of the Nintendo Switch. I do want us to move us along, So, but before we go into that, uh, overall, Calionis, final thoughts, first year of the Switch. What's your gut feeling about it? Was it a huge success for you? I'm not talking about sales, I'm talking about anything. I know what you're going to say, but I still want you to say it. But still, how you feel about Nintendo Switch in during the first year? Well, um, I would say like my worries about the system basically stopped when we saw the, uh, the, the first trailer. Because we knew that Nintendo had an idea, they had a clear idea, and they knew how to communicate it and have people clearly understand it. Um, if there was any worry, uh, it was probably initially when they... Uh, show that they only had like uh, seven or nine games, depending on what region you were uh, at launch. And they hadn't really talked about what other games were going to be coming out after. So uh, they had a system, they had a killer uh, title at the beginning, but they didn't really flesh out the the the, the other crop of games that were going to be coming out. Kind of like kind of like this year where uh, Nintendo still hasn't really said what's going to be happening in 2018, what we're going to be seeing. Uh, and people are a little bit skeptical of what's going to be happening. They're saying, oh, 2018 is not going to be as good as 2017. They may be right because you had Breath of the Wild. You had uh, Super Mario Odyssey. You had Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You had Neo Mark R. A. Deluxe and, and those other amazing games that is going to be really hard to top uh, 2017 uh, Nintendo. But um, as far as how the system did, I always said uh, that it was going to do great. It could have been my Nintendo fanboy side, uh, you know, talking, but I'm still surprised that people have been able to embrace it uh, this way, that the system has continued, uh, and not surprised that I didn't believe it was, was going to happen, but surprised from the aspect of other people that were skeptical or other people that didn't really care at all, and they're actually coming over um, and getting the system. And, and this also helps because uh, we've seen a lot of people from the industry uh, getting the games. A lot of people from the industry are uh, praising the games. Even the, um, like we saw the, the tweet from Naughty Dog, um, you know, praising Nintendo um, as well. And that's a developer that they're never in, you know, going to make a Nintendo game because they belong to Sony. Uh, but even they were praising uh, Nintendo. So it is uh, something very special uh, that Nintendo has going on. Uh, hopefully they're going to continue to make the, the correct decisions and have the games uh, to support the system. Um, but um, it's, um, I guess a, they did what they needed to do uh, to make it a success. And coming from the Wii U, um, it's, uh, it's a great story. Uh, we'll see how 2018 compares to 2017. Okay, so I'm going to do quick closing comments. We're hitting the 33-minute mark here. But... Uh... I believe that the Switch is already better than the Wii U and the GameCube. I was not a huge fan of the GameCube. I was not a huge fan of the Wii U. Uh, I don't know where it stands against the Wii and the N64. I think that's something that we'll wait and see once the the system life cycle ends. But to me, it is already better than those two systems. Uh, now, for 2018, since you brought it up, I am a, a little, little bit concerned uh, but you have to understand why people are a little bit concerned, Calionis, because Nintendo doesn't get the amount of third-party support that the other systems get. So a lot of people are saying, look, where, where, where are the games? Where are the games? I believe they'll be there. Uh, they do have good indie support. So if, if, if you're just looking for AAA games, it may hurt your, your enjoyment of the system. But if you are willing to go into the eShop and look for some gems like Celeste or Golf Story, I think you can expand the life of the, of the Switch until the new games come in. But I am a little bit worried. I'm hopeful that it will get fixed. Uh, I still believe that it won't be as good as last year, but it's going to be hard to top any that year anyway, uh, no matter what Nintendo did this year, in my opinion. But anyway, with that said, we love the Switch. Happy birthday, Switch. Feliz cumpleaños, Sati. So happy birthday, Switch. 
Hope you guys uh, keep having many birthdays, and hopefully we'll get that Switch Pro in a couple of years so I can uh, make sure that I can play Xenoblade Chronicles straight 720p, no dips in, in frame rate. <laughs> anyway, Caliones, move on with the next hot topic. <laughs> 35 minutes in. Okay, so yeah, so basically uh, we're uh, done with the celebration when it comes to Nintendo Switch. Um, I, I I don't know, like uh, I feel like you know, 2018 is going to get really, really close uh, to 2017. And this is going to get, it's right now it's hard to see it, but as the mo months move along, people are going to see a, a clearer picture of what Nintendo's plans are for uh, 2018. And it, it all starts with Nintendo Labo in in April, so we'll, we'll wow. see. I, I think yeah, Ugh, that's on, gonna be a big success. It's gonna be a big it's success. Gonna, like, but but the people who are worried you. are not care about Labo. I'm just saying, I don't well, care about no. Labo. You're, I think you're gonna see the other companies do something similar to it <laughs> uh, afterwards. Trust me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, I guess I'll you know going with the uh, the piece of news that we have on here, and the next topic is uh, the one that we talked about at the same time that people were celebrating. The Nintendo Switch's first year, they were actually getting extreme. Yeah, getting, I mean, they, they they had a big scare because uh, the play activity on the system disappeared. Uh, and a lot of people were saying, okay, so the Nintendo Switch saves your play data for only one year. At the year mark, it actually resets and you have to stay and you know, start over. And I know for you know people like you where you have... 300 plus hours on Breath of the Wild, 200 plus hours on uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and 100 plus hours on Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, you don't really want to see that go away and, and reset to zero. Uh, but people shouldn't really be afraid of this. Uh, it is something, it's, it's just a small glitch, uh, and they, uh, they, they will be seeing it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, again, we're going to fly with this next topic. We're going to be a little bit behind in time, but... Uh, yeah, uh, I, hopefully it won't go away. This is a good feature to have. Uh, I wish the PlayStation 4 had it. It maybe has it. I don't even know it, but it's easy to find on the Switch. And and, and at least you can see the time with your games. Uh, the Xenoblade, at least I can see my save file where I can see the amount of time. But for games like Mario Odyssey and, and Zelda Breath of the Wild, it doesn't have a timer itself. I think you want to watch it on the N64. On the N64 on the <laughs> on the switch so hopefully they'll fix this and i think they will i think i heard that they already fixed it and some people are getting back their data or well know, it's um that it, it's gonna take 10 days uh but after the 10 days it, it goes back so they can start seeing it again okay it, it's just something that's gonna be effective for a 10-day period I, I haven't turned on my switch yet until uh, i don't want to risk it so I'll, I'll, I'll wait <laughs> i'll wait until that happens anyway Caliones, let's move to the next uh hot topic Okay, moving over to the next one, and this is something where Nintendo uh, last week had introduced uh, being able to do reviews on their games uh, on the eShop so people could go in, do reviews, uh, but as soon as they released it, it only took a couple of days, and they actually removed it. Uh, so people were asking why, uh, or you know, you're just trying to find out exactly what was the reasoning be behind this, but uh, Nintendo actually did have an explanation, and they stated that uh, Nintendo.com recently offered a trial a trial customer review feature to let users share feedback about Nintendo Switch games on our website. The response has been positive, and Nintendo appreciates the time and effort that reviewers put into the thoughtful commentary on the games. Nintendo has removed this feature as we evaluate the future of the ratings functionality on Nintendo.com. We have no estimate on when an update will be provided on the status of this initiative, but we appreciate the enthusiasm shown for the trial. So, uh, I mean, I didn't really hear anything where uh, people were, I guess, you know, bombing reviews or, or doing, you know, those sort of things. So that wasn't necessarily the case. It seems like it was just indeed uh, something that Nintendo wanted to release, see how people did take it away and then analyze it and, and see what they're going to be doing moving forward. But I feel like it is a feature that it should just stay. Uh, I mean, uh, other websites, other retailers, they, they have it. Uh, so why not just you know, leave it on there? So, But uh, what do you think about this? Uh, again, Nintendo is struggling with damn communication. They need to uh, <laughs> talk to someone. Because, you know, they didn't say what they were doing. They just put this feature on there. People were excited. Oh, my life, finally, we're getting reviews, something that the other systems have forever. And then they take it away. 
And then people were like, "What? Why you? Why you do that?" And then news outlets had to go into Nintendo and ask him, "So what happened?" And then Nintendo finally explained that they're just doing a trial and trying to see if if this is something that they want to add to their eShop. So again, Nintendo take some damn communication classes. Just explain to people what you're doing, and I think people won't get mad. It's just just explain to them what you are doing. So it sucks that they took it away. Hopefully they'll bring it fa uh, fast soon. This should be a feature already on the Switch. The Switch, if there's something that I would criticize about the Switch in the first year, is that it's lacking a lot of features that should be already there, like this, cloud saving. Um, and, you know, and, and that's where Nintendo is really struggling with this system. They need, they need to put those type of features as soon as possible, voice chat, stuff like that. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, Nintendo will get their, their stuff together. Uh, but you have to criticize them on this, Kalianas. This I think if they would have communicated, it would have been better. Yeah, but it, it is what it is, I guess. Okay, so uh, moving along from this one and going over to another one. Wait, wait, uh, wait. Now we're going to news bursts. We're done yeah. with Hot Topics, right? Okay. <laughs> right? We're switching, but we're 40 minutes in. So we're going to hit news bursts like it is, like a burst. So anyway, Kalianas. Thank you for the hot topics of the week. So let's move into Onuma's news burst. <laughs> so, Caliones, what is the first piece of news? Okay, well, uh, the first piece of news is that uh, you know, this past week, people were actually introduced to a tweet from Blizzard where Blizzard was actually announcing the release of Diablo 3 on the Nintendo Switch until they were actually not announcing the release of Diablo 3 on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, basically, they stated that uh, we assure you that we're not that clever. Uh, it was meant to be a fun community engagement piece. We have nothing to announce. So I, I do understand that when it comes to Nintendo uh, fans and myself included, we we like to try to read between things. Uh, if you're if you are part of that yeah, gap community um, for like 2015 and 2016, looking at pictures, looking at the uh, the glare on a picture, you know, reflection of trees and and everything, just to try to yeah figure out what it was. But yeah, we can take things to a whole nother level when it comes when it comes to overanalyzing things. Uh, so far, no. Diablo 3 is not going to come to Nintendo Switch, uh, or at least it hasn't been officially announced. If they're working on it, we don't know. Uh, but they stated that they have nothing to announce, so uh, we can leave uh, them alone for now. But I'm going to ask you guys just to enjoy the ride and stop poor begging. Just wait until the damn games get announced. Don't look at every damn picture. Don't go into freaking LinkedIn and find, uh, I don't know, uh, people who's working in the industry and what games they're working on and stuff like that. Just let it be announced, guys. Just have some patience. God damn. Anyway, Kanye, let's go to the next one. Okay, moving over to the next one. And this is about the you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and it finally had its version update 1.3.0. It was released um, a little, I'll say probably like uh, right after midnight um on friday to saturday or on friday uh thursday to friday at midnight uh and it is fixed a couple of issues it added the uh, the new game plus uh, or the equivalent to it uh to the game uh now you can have certain characters as blades uh and even if you start the game over uh those blades that you had already gotten you can start um with those so uh the update is live if you are playing the game and you have already beaten it uh, you can go back and uh, start it again or uh, get additional uh, items and things uh, for it. So that has officially been released. Um, Looks continuing. fun. Looks fun. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I know you're, you're going to play it uh, eventually once the, all the DLC comes out, so you don't have to worry about it yet. No, um, I haven't downloaded yet, but I will. I'm just waiting until all the DLC comes out. And I'll do another playthrough for sure. But anyway, go ahead, Kalina. Okay, so uh, another piece of news on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and this is coming straight from Japan, and is that the official soundtrack of the game will be coming out on May 23rd. Uh, so uh, the item uh, has been listed on Amazon Japan. Uh, it is uh, among its features, it has a USB memory stick shaped as a core crystal. It has 126 tracks stored on the memory stick. 105 tracks from the main game, 16 single tracks, and five piano arrangements. Uh, the premium box uh, and a 20, 120p premium booklet. 
uh, piano score of the title theme uh, where we used to be uh, has message cards, uh, type B, um, type C, and uh, the OST uh, will be available as a digital purchase as well. It's already sold out. <laughs> it's crazy, guys. It's already sold out. I mean, soundtrack is awesome, so I understand why you guys want it. I would mind want having that as a collector's item since I have a lot of things. But I didn't even know that it came out to pre-order, and when I checked, it was already sold out. So it is what it is. We'll see if I get another shot or then later have to uh, scavenge eBay. Go ahead, well, Calion. And this is what happens when you do the show and you don't do it as soon as the news drops by and you have to wait until Saturday to you know, say uh, a couple of pieces of news. Yeah, sure. But by then, it may be too late. It's always um, too late. <laughs> Go ahead, Calion. But uh, moving over to the next one, and Nintendo ranked as, you know, they ranked in second place uh, in Metacritic's top publishers of 2017. Um, this is uh, coming from, you know, Bethesda was actually the uh, number one publisher in 2017, and they, they stated that Nintendo once again released more distinct titles than any other publisher while somehow managing to boost its average meta score above the already admirable figures of the year before. The gaming giant was also the only publisher to achieve a 90-plus score for three different titles in 2017. That group includes New Mario Kart and a Super Mario installment, as well as our 2017 game of the year, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. All three of those games were released for Nintendo's new Switch console, a massive hit that managed to outsell its predecessor, the Wii U, in less than a year. In fact, Nintendo's Metascore average of four its Switch release releases was 80.0, compared to an average of 75.5 for its 3DS game. So how amazing uh, the year was for Nintendo's um, you know, library of games. It was actually an 80.0 meta score for the Nintendo Switch titles released in 2017. It could have been higher, Calionis, if they would not release uh, one to Switch. Just say <laughs> Uh, that hurt, that hurt, but it's all good. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but what they didn't do in Metal Credit Score, they actually made it in, in, through the bank because they sold well on that game. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but uh, going over to the next one, and this is from uh, some yeah, data miners. Uh, they were looking into the uh, Super Mario Odyssey, and they actually found new hints at a uh, Moon DLC. Uh, so they, I mean, we can't really throw it on here, but uh, they do have uh, a couple of pictures, a couple of uh, what well, uh, graphics and things like that where it shows uh, new content for the game. Uh, hopefully, um, once the, uh, the new version drops by, then we will be able to, to get more content of Super Mario Odyssey. Of course, we already got the uh, Luigi's uh, Balloon uh, World uh, update uh, on the game, which was a free one. If you haven't already, uh, uh, just you know, open the game, update it, and it'll be available there. But it seems like there may be more to come for Super Mario Odyssey. So the only thing that I'm a little bit sad about this piece of news is that it's just moons, more moons. I'm like, yeah, really? Wa okay, whatever. I really want to be able to use Luigi. Come on, Nintendo. Make it happen somehow. Ah, oh, God damn it. Anyway, sorry, Calionis. But yeah, I think this is just, this is just showing that we are going to get uh, more DLC content for Mario Odyssey. So, yeah, and this is not the only thing that the data miners were all able to uncover. They are actually uncovered uh, additional hats uh, for Super Mario Odyssey. So they had a hat name, batting helmet with a baseball uniform, a conductor wig with a conductor outfit, racing helmet with a racing outfit, a Santa hat uh, with a Santa outfit, a, a saddle of view helmet with a saddle of view suit. Zombie headwear, uh, along with the outfit, Harriet hat and a suit, Rango hat and a suit, uh, Spielberg hat and Spielberg suit, and a topper hat and suit as well. So um, it seems like moons are not going to be able to, are not going to be the only thing that's going to be added uh, to the game. Uh, new hats and new costumes uh, should be making its way as well. I mean that's fine. I mean I don't care about those because I typically kept Mario with his uh, standard suit. I like seeing Mario with his classics. Uh, I think the most that I switched was Luigi suit or the original Mario uh, game suit, right? But aside from that, I, I didn't change it much, aside from a couple of moons here and there. But it's good for people who likes to collect everything and get all the stuff, uh, all the suits and stuff like that. I mean, this is good. I haven't gone back and got the DLC stuff yet that came with the balloon. 
uh, uh, Luigi. Uh, so I'm, I guess I don't have the 100% anymore, Calionis. But uh, maybe someday, once they done getting all the DLC, then I'll just go in and clean up what I have remaining. But hey, good news. More Mario Odyssey is good. Game is freaking great. Okay, so uh, going over with the next piece of news, and it seems like um, this is a, a rumor going on. It's nothing confirmed, but it seems like GameStop TV uh, advertised Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, of course, you know, no, nothing has been talked about the game. The game uh, was, you know, was mentioned, but it was mentioned as a PS4 and an Xbox One title. Uh, there's no confirmation about Final Fantasy XV on Switch, but if you believe uh, what GameStop TV uh, showed, it seems like the game will also make the way over. You guys don't need to pour back about this one, trust me. You got the better RPG in Xenoblade Chronicle. You got even the better Square RPG because right now, I'm going to say something unpopular here. I feel like I'm Setsuna, it's better than Final Fantasy XV. <gasps> oh my god! So, I think you guys are fine. And you got Octopath Traveler looks like it's going to be even a better RPG than Final Fantasy XV. So don't waste your time with this one. It's an okay game. Hey, if you get it on the Switch, hey, good for you guys. Play it, but... You guys are fine. You got you guys have the better JRPGs right now. Okay, and going over with the next piece of news. Um, this is coming from uh, the UK, and they just experienced a record five billion uh, libra for the country. So they had a new record when it came to sales, and they actually did state that the driving factor for those records were. VR and the Nintendo Switch as well. So historically, the Nintendo Switch doesn't really sell as well in Europe as it does in other countries or specifically in the UK. Um, I mean, the Switch did, did pass uh, a million systems sold in France, uh, but in the UK, normally Nintendo systems and franchises don't sell as well, but they actually did help along with VR uh, for them to ex uh, experience their biggest sales ever. Um, in 2017. Yep, that's good news. I mean, I'm happy for VR. VR is selling really well. I'm more, su I'm really, I I'm more surprised about the VR selling than the Switch because the Switch kind of you knew when it came out. The VR was like, oh, another Sony thing that they put on there, and then they're gonna drop in six months. But I have to give credit. I've been surprised how Sony has continued support with the VR, and at the same time, I'm happy that the Switch is selling in Europe. It's not their strongest country, but. If they sell in more regions, means of course you'll get more games. So good news. Okay, and um, moving on from um, UK and going over, you know, back to Japan, and it seems like the first official building for the Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios has gone up. Uh, the building itself, uh, it can be viewed from the other parking lot or, or from the outside. Uh, it doesn't really has anything to identify exactly what kind of attraction is going to be. Uh, but uh, it's there. It's um, Super Nintendo World is not really scheduled to uh, open until 2020, and and that'll be before the Olympics. Uh, I know that you know uh, in 2020, if it does open indeed before the Olympics, uh, that's going to be one of the big attractions for athletes uh, when they go to Japan. Uh, but it is good news it's, it, that it is on track uh, to be open by then. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe they'll do it over here too. I think they're planning to do it over here too, right, Karen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they said that they're going to be doing it over here. Uh, and from what they're talking about, it seems like they were going to do it at a specific location, but they might be moving to a different location, which is going to be bigger. So that way they're going to have a bigger area for uh, Super Nintendo World. Okay. I'll be interesting. Once they open it, that's one of the vacation spots they're probably going to hit at some point. So. Yeah, and, and we sh will be going over there and doing a live stream just for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if we're still doing this by the time they open that. <laughs> anyway, Carlos, let's go to the next one. Okay, and now we're going to be talking about games that are, have been announced for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so we have Pixel Noir uh, will be making its way to the Switch. Uh, they stated that the game has been, uh, uh, like around 40% of the story has been implemented within the game. Uh, they haven't really specified when exactly uh, the game is going to be out. Uh, but that's one of the games that, you know, to look forward to. Uh, for the system, also we have uh, the you know for the king, uh, which is an, uh, a roguelike RPG adventure, uh, will be coming over to the Switch as well. And it's not scheduled for 2018; it is scheduled for an early 2019 release. 
Uh, and we have Outlast 2 with the uh, the first Outlast just came out this week on the Nintendo Switch. The second one uh, should be making its way on March 27 for the Switch. And Dantes, we are done with the news. 54 minutes. We're trying to see if we hit our hour mark like we tried to be efficient. So let's go quickly. Calionis, if I wanted to know all the hot games coming to our favorite store, where should I go to? Chigeru's Supermarket. Bing. Go ahead, Calionis. What games came out this week? Okay, so we have, I believe, a list of 21 different games that have released for Nintendo Switch this past week. Uh, and those games are in or well, uh, not in order, but they have Grid Mania, Super Toy Cars, A Whole New World, A Normal Lost Phone, mm. Sengoku 2, Arcade Archive Star Force, Damascus Gear Operation Tokyo, Detention, Guild Battle, Battle Arena, Little Triangle, Mulaka, Packet Queen Number, Paper Wars, Cannon Fodder, Devastated, Poison Thud Card, Subsurface Circular, Totes the Goat, Air Hockey, Bridge, bridge Constructor Portal. <laughs> I thought you said Bitch Constructor. <laughs> bridge Constructor Portal. <laughs> Uh, Outlast, Bundle of Terror, and uh, those were the games for this week. And and you know which one's going to be the game. Um, not only because I personally I reviewed the game uh, and played it, and it had uh, the company gave us you know, the review code uh, like a week or so before it released, but also because it's actually a game that surpassed my expectations. Uh, it is a great uh, adventure game uh, and something that if you guys can't experience it, Go out there, go play Mulaka. Um, it is based on uh, it's not the other the Mexican uh, a tribe in, in Mexico and their mythology, something similar to how the movie uh, Moana is. Uh, but uh, they uh, poured their heart and soul into the game. It actually is a worthwhile uh, adventure game and action as well. Uh, it does have a pretty good battle system. Okay. That's it. Mulaka is the game of the week. Sounds like a, like a rough week, but I guess Mulaka and Outlast saved the, the full list of uh, this uh, week. But anyway, Caliones, look at that. We were efficient. 57 minutes. I think it's time to end the show. But before we end the show, I want to give you guys a heads up. This Wednesday, we are going to be dropping a video announcing the Splatoon tournament, right? The reason I'm getting, letting you guys know right now that once that video drops... If you guys asked for your parent permission and they gave you the chance to participate in this tournament, you need to write in the comment section submitting you guys as you're going to be participating in the tournament. So then after this Wednesday, the following week on Tuesday, we will start the preliminaries. And basically, depending on your wins and losses, you're going to be seated in the tournament the following week after that. So we got a whole lot of plans. We're going to lay it out in the video this Wednesday, this is the, the big thanks that we're giving you guys for the subscriptions. This was supposedly to be done when we did 200. Hey, we're close to 500, so maybe we just do it for celebrating the 500 mark if we get there. But, but what is the, the winner will get is basically a eShop $50 gift card. That way you guys can spend it in anything uh, that you guys want to on the eShop because that's easier for us. We'll send you an email, your code. And then you can uh, go ahead, go wild, and spend the the money, uh, whatever you want. But that is basically how the tournament is gonna is gonna is gonna go. Watch the video on Wednesday, and if you're gonna participate, please comment in the comment section that we uh, make sure that you are in the tournament. Okay, just clarifying that. But with that said, Calionis, now let's end the show, and of course. There's that Xenoblade sweet music to end the show. I want to thank everybody for watching the Get In and Get Out Nintendo podcast episode 36 right here on the Force in Unison Gaming channel. Please remember to subscribe, 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 like, and comment so you can make this two crazy MS happy. Also, if you don't want to see ugly faces, 
It's all good. We got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show up some love. Also, go to the description box below so you can see the full channel schedule. Mondays, Cineblade Mondays. Tuesday, Forcing Unison Live. Wednesday, Streaming Wednesdays, where Caliones and Inkling G plays Platoon. Fridays, Toys and More Club plays Minecraft. And of course, Saturday, this beautiful, beautiful show. Also, we do have a Facebook page called at Forcing Unison Gaming. And finally, and Nantes says finally, go to Chiguero's News and SwitchCard.net and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, thank you again for joining us. Good night, everybody, and long live Nintendo. See you guys.